Good morning. My name is Eric Levinson at Vena Capital. I'm joined today by Tao Ong. Tao Ong is a portfolio manager of VVF. It's a VCG uh, Form 1 Partners Fund. It's our USIS uh, registered fund in Luxembourg. And we're here today kind of intra-quarter because we've received a lot of questions about what's going on in Vietnam and really how we've been able uh, to perform. So just a quick update in performance. Uh, today's August 24th. Uh, year to date, we're down 7.1 versus the VNI. Uh, down 17.4. And importantly, when we look at a three-year number, uh, we're up 17.5% versus the index at 8.2%. So, you know, 2021 uh, was a very strong year for the fund. 2022, which has been a negative year, no one likes seeing a down market, uh, but certainly we've been able to outperform. So congratulations and thank you on behalf of our shareholders. Leads to the first question, how do you navigate volatility in a market like this? Um, 2022 is definitely more challenging than the past years. So um, since uh, early this year, we already uh, reduced the portfolio beta and moved to position defensively for the uh, uh, portfolio. Um, one of the things we want to highlight here is we uh, focus not only on growth, but also on a quality of growth, such as uh, cash flow generation, earning visibility to weather um, any storm. Another imp important factor is that yeah, you know, um, in, to invest in Vietnam, you need to have a good understanding of the management um, to evaluate their competency as well as corporate governance um, because management can make or break the company. Given that, um, you can steer clear of certain permanent capital loss because these kind of quality companies can rebound quickly after the sell-off uh, or uh, can do better over the long term, um, especially when better times return. Okay. And so that despite the bad markets, uh, you know, the portfolios continue to outperform. We, we shared some of the statistics uh, in the opening. What were the specific decisions? You talked about lowering the beta, but what were the uh, you know, kind of other decisions on the micro level that led to the outperformance? Um, in addition to uh, reducing the, the beta and uh, positioning the portfolio more defensively, our stock selection in uh, IT information sector, uh, industrial utilities, as well as consumer sectors uh, contributed to our outperformance even um, year to date, the, uh, the market declined 17% in USD terms. Um, several of our top holdings recorded positive returns uh, year to date. Uh, for example, we have um, FPT, Germadept. Uh, um, FPT is the information technology company. Germadept is the, one of the largest pork and logistic operators in Vietnam. Uh, RE is the uh, holdings company. Uh, with major source of revenue from uh, power plants. So these companies uh, were able to record a very good uh, earning growth in the first half, and we expect them to deliver that kind of growth in the second half of the year. In addition to that, um, our decision to um, raise cash uh, in the early of this year uh, from around 5% uh, in February to 15% uh, in early Q2 uh, also help uh, our, our performance. And so I think the, the July fact sheet shows cash at around 16%. And, and what is it today, kind of August 24th? Um, so as of today, our cash level um, dropped down to around 10% uh, because we saw some opportunities of better entry point in certain stocks, in uh, um, industrials, as well as in banking. So we pick up the opportunities to buy in, in some uh, good stocks at a good price. Yeah. So you talked about how you kind of, you, you know, kind of created a more defensively positioned portfolio, increased the cash position, and then de de decreased recently. What else are you operating in terms of differently, you know, in 2022 versus 2021? Um, this year, in terms of um, stock selection, 
uh, we pay more attention uh, to the, those kind of quality, like uh, we ask the question uh, based on uh, how defensive is the, the, the earnings of the, the companies in tough uh, market condition, uh, what are their pricing powers to pass on inflation, or how strong is their balance sheet so that we can uh, select the good company uh, in the portfolio or defensive company in the portfolio. Um, however, one new thing uh, this year is that we uh, place more emphasis on uh, analyzing macro policy changing more than ever. Um, and this help uh, guide us in uh, some tactical allocation. For example, early this year, we reduced our exposure to uh, real estate sector because uh, we think um, the sector is sensitive to percent potential interest hike as well as the um, uh, tightening credit uh, in Vietnam. So you talked about how to reposition the portfolio. You talked about really uh, making sure you own certain companies. So that leads me to leave you have a very active portfolio. So obviously people who are hiring a fund manager want to see uh, a fair amount of active share. Uh, what is the active share of the VVF portfolio and, and why? The um, active share of uh, VVF ranges uh, from 65% to about, slightly above 70%. Um, so um, at this moment, it is around 72%. Um, the reason why uh, is that uh, we invested uh, in a high conviction portfolio uh, with high active weight in the stock that we like and have uh, a deep conviction or have deep uh, understanding about that companies. Excellent. And so you talked about how in the month of July, you've reduced the cash position from around 16 to 10 but that clearly means that a 10% means that still there's some risks out there. So what are the risks that you're thinking about as you look at the next six months? I think um, most risk are uh, Um So what is Sochinus risk um, that uh, at the top of our mind is that the uh, risk of uh, the world recession uh, because Vietnam is um, the country uh, also depending on export. We export uh, a cap more than 100% of GDP. Uh, so the country is uh, quite vulnerable to any global recession. Uh, although uh, when we study Vietnamese macro data, we see little evidence of a slowdown, but uh, we remain alert on any deterioration signal uh, going forward. Excellent. And it is interesting what we've seen, and we just had a quick chat with uh, Michael Colgari, our chief economist, and it was uh, even even now with the slowdown of the U.S. economy, what we're seeing is exports are still growing, but the pace of that growth has slowed. So again, still, uh, I guess, positive. So the final question is, as you think about the next kind of six months leading into the next year, what are the specific, you know, headwinds and tailwinds uh, for for the market? And then, and then how are you either managing today or what adjustments do you think you'll be making in the next couple of months? Um. For the, uh, the, the, the uh, highlight of the positive aspect of the market, um, due to recent uh, or the past uh, few months uh, market correction, the valuation of the market came down to an attractive level of around 12 times our earnings uh, of uh, this year, 2022. And if we look to next year, the uh, PE could be around 10 times, uh, which is very attractive in the long term, in our view. Um, however, in terms of earning growth, if we look at 2023, uh, it could be slowing down to mid-teen level uh, from 20% of this year. Uh, but uh, given that perspective, uh, it's still positive compared with the uh, growth outlook of uh, uh, regional countries. Um, so regarding the uh, sector allocation uh, going forward, we uh, remain bullish on uh, information sector, information technology sector, uh, park and logistics, industrial parks, utilities, as well as uh, consumer sectors. In the meantime, uh, we remain highly selective in real estate and banking sector. Uh, for example, in uh, real estate, we focus on companies with clear land bank, 
um, good sales record, sound balance sheet, and strong cash flow. Uh, for example, we uh, like uh, Nam Long in our portfolio for real estate sector. Uh, for banking sector, we emphasize the selection in top tier bank, which have um, very outstanding asset quality, prudent lending practices, and uh, sufficient uh, loan loss provision. Um, the banks we are aiming at uh, are Vicom Bank, uh, ACB, or MB Bank. So we are increasing exposure to this bank uh, with high active weights. Well, Tao, thank you so much for sharing your insights. And for those of you that joined us today, thank you very much. And if you have any questions uh, about the VVF uh, Usage Fund, uh, please reach out. And thank you again. Thank you.